revelation. Prayer is revelatory. Prayer gives focus and clarity because it kind of defines, keeps you in a boundary of playing prayer so you're not all over the place, you know. Prayer requires a response, and today we're going to talk about prayer is power. Hallelujah, and it is power. It is to us and to the world a revelation of who Yahweh is. Uh, it is a revelation of his truth when we walk it out according to how we're supposed to walk it out. Hallelujah. It is not meant to lift us up, but it is meant to lift Yahweh up. It is meant to lift uh, uh, and maybe a nation up. Hallelujah. Our, our prophets had to pray for Israel all the time. We saw our Savior. What was he doing? Praying. When I, the Talmudim were doing what? Sleeping. They were tired. They'd been through so much. But prayer is what sustains us and what keeps us. It elevates us many times above a situation. My best time of day many times is when I get up for morning prayer. Hallelujah. And then all day long I get to work, which I'll be retiring in two days. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all will take care of me. Y'all will take care of me. Hallelujah. Through every day or all the way, as the song says, he will take care. So the uh, scripture that I have with this, I don't know why it's not showing up over there, is James 5.16. And what the, the scripture that I want to look at is, again, James 5 and 16. It is the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or righteous Adam, because that includes male and female, availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous Adam availeth much. Effectual. It causes a change in the atmosphere. You know, people that go around saying, there, there feels like there's a change in the atmosphere when a righteous man, one who is upright, one who does the word and work of Yahweh, hallelujah, one who knows the word, is pleased uh, with the word of Yah, excited about him, will do what he needs to do. This is the righteous man, fervent. That word fervent is power. That is energy going forth. Hallelujah. So the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails, but it, it does much. It causes much to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this is what Israel is. Israel from its beginning was born in power. We look at Jacob. If I can figure out how to go next. Next. Oh, okay. There it is. All right. Uh, Israel, I've got here the next slide. By the power invested by Yah. Yahweh invested himself. He yes. invested him with his word. He invested the blood of Yeshua. You know, he invested his, his, his prophets or his, his, who is it, his Nabi. Uh, with the job of getting the job right, getting the job done at a very cost of their lives. Most of them died horrible deaths trying to make sure that Israel uh, would get the word in them, <clears throat> for it was the seed of life for them. Genesis 32 and 28, uh, and he said, he said, thy name, and this is, remember Jacob was, was at that place where he had, his family was getting ready to cross over to Jordan, and he was going to be on the other side, and he wrestled with a man that night. And many of us believe that man was Yeshua himself. Hallelujah. And he said, that name shall be called no more, no more Jacob, but Israel. Hallelujah. Here is our progenitor uh, in the fight of his life. Uh, for as a prince... Hast thou power with God or Yah and with men, and hast prevailed? 
uh, this was spoken into Israel when they were only seized in uh, uh, in the loins of his sons because by this time, y- Yaakov or Jacob had given birth to those 12 sons. So he is speaking life over a generation that is yet to come. And here we are today, some of us, hallelujah, sitting here in this room, eating, rejoicing, praising Yah for bringing us from accidents, you know, because it has not matter what Hasatan has, has tried to do. Yah's word and his power has been stronger. Hallelujah. So Israel, uh, the power, is, is, is a recipient of the power given from on high by the Most High, uh, and it should be evident in all that we do, evident in all of our life, especially prayer. Nobody there but you and y'all, you know, and that can be, uh, so that's a private thing, and it can be a public thing, but it is y'all dealing with you regarding his people. The name changes and in is an inner inner signal to you be to your being that you have been moved from the darkness into his marvelous light. You can say that the seed of Yah's word is rooting within you is what that name change is signifying. One of the things that the double helix or the DNA is forming in you, uh, forming you into his image after his likeness. Because we are not perfect. Yahweh is forming that word. When that name changes, it says that I am changing you. I'm bringing in you into my likeness. You not just playing around. And I see, and it may take a minute for it to change. You know, it's not like the church that you were saved out automatically and then you know overnight you got saved yesterday. You ought to be acting better today. How many of us know it don't act? It don't do like that. <laughs> So here's a definition for effective because it is the effective, fervent prayer of who? A righteous man. A righteous man. It is an adjective. It is descriptive. Uh, It says, one, successful in producing a desired or intended result. That's what prayer is. You want a a result. You know, a lot of times we're praying for sick. We're praying for people that you think, man, they almost did. But how do you not, not know that Yahweh resurrects? He is the resurrection and the life of all men. Hallelujah. Uh, it says one of the synonyms is successful, effectual, because I actually had to use the word effective to find this. Effectual, efficacious, productive, constructive, fruitful. Hallelujah. The word is all of that, the uh, effective word. That's what we do. We pray a prayer that we believe that is going to work. You know, what's the purpose of prayer? I'm going to pray for you, but I don't know. Please don't pray for me. Don't, don't, don't pray for me. You know, it's right. It's, what did Romo say? If, if you, Valerie Romo, if you're going to pray, believe. If you can't believe, don't pray. Don't pray about it. Leave it, leave it alone. And I don't think that's the right quote, but that's essentially what it was, you know. Don't pray if you cannot believe it, you know, if it's like, oh, maybe he will. Because we represent a Yahweh who with man it is impossible. With Yah, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there are times that it is a noun. It says virtual, practical, essential, operative, actual, implied, implicit, unacknowledged. How many times do we go to work and you don't get, you you just unacknowledged? Shamika, I know you're a good social worker, but you know this this your job, girl. <laughs> Throw the kid over there to to to, <laughs> to Sister Shamika. She'll figure out what to do. I'm going home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes it's thankless, you know, but Yahweh recognizes. He knows and he sees. Fervent, what is the word fervent? It too is an adjective, so a descriptive word. A fervent dis- disciple of text, I don't, I don't read it. Having or displaying a passionate intensity, that's how we pray. We're passionate about what we pray about because we believe that Yahweh can do this. Uh, synonym, impassioned, passionate, intense, vehement, ardent. 
fervent, sincere, feeling, profound, deep-seated, heartfelt. We believe y'all can do anything, you know, anything, as they used to say, but fail. And if we don't see it, guess what? It might be, it just might be that it's something that we set up, but the next generation has to take care of. It's possible that sometimes that happens. I didn't see the result of that. Maybe you weren't intended to see the result. Abraham walked all those miles. Yeshua walked a lot of miles for places that they would never live in. But Israel got to live in all of, what is it, rabbits? Ophir. <laughs> all Ophir, Ophir. They got to live in it all. It is laying, sitting over there waiting for the rest of Israel to come into. So they had to do what they had to do for the seed of Israel. Hallelujah. Okay, right, righteous, righteousness. All those words basically meaning the same thing. And the word of, that came to us from Yahweh says, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 2, Do not add to the word which I command you, and do not take away from it so as to guard the commands of Yahweh, your Elohim, which I am commanding you. And we know that this is a thing that today they're saying, and have been saying it for quite some time, you ain't got to follow all those commands, but it keeps coming up. Keep my commands and live. This is your life, Yahweh Elohim spoke to us, that you have to do this. You know, it's not about, oh, I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like doing that. I don't think he told us to do all of that stuff. Well, you take your chances and let me take mine. <laughs> so let's look at Eliyahu, the prayer of a righteous man. Who is a righteous man? And when we look at, we're going to look at uh, Kings. I think that's Second Kings, First Kings, 17, chapter 17. Verse 17 through 24. I think it's 1 Kings. I just wrote down Kings. It's one of the kings, y'all. <laughs> and this is actually uh, my last little bit, so I got to find the 1 Kings. This is where the woman lost her son. You know, hey, I ain't asked you for no son. I was good by myself. And here you come. You could have left me alone. Or is, wait a minute, that might not be that. That, that, that ki 17th chapter got so much in it. It is First Kings, chapter Eliyahu. Oh, can you read a little bit louder?
Hallelujah. So Yahweh will do things that, that test even his, his people, the prophets, you know, because it's like, oh, Yahweh, did you kill this? <laughs> you know, you kill this woman's son, and guess who it looks like is going to have to clean up the mess? We don't have to clean up Yahweh's mess. Yahweh know exactly what he's going to do, and it's never going to be messy. So he takes this woman's son. This is a, a, truly a step of belief. You laying down and breathing into this young man's life, the life of Elohim. Did we see that back in Genesis? He blew the breath of lives into Adam. Hallelujah. He meant for the trend to keep going. Now, what do we do with the breath of life? It is the word that Yahweh has given us to speak on a continual basis. It is uplifting people. It is seeing that people, uh, that, that conversion happens in a person's life, that folks see enough difference in us that they want to come and maybe pattern themselves after us, but it's not after us. It's after Yahweh Almighty. So Yahweh restores this woman's son to her, whom she said she didn't ask for. But Yahweh reads hearts. He knows the hearts of people, you know, what they need, what they don't need. You know, the, the, what their assignment uh, is. And we just praise Yah because he does all this stuff for us. You know, so the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a woman availeth much. Do not think that your prayer is not important. Do not think, you know, that... Gee, y'all, we've been praying for this a long time. You don't know the plans of Yahweh. We don't know how he intends to intervene in people's lives, you know. So we have to trust him on whatever. You know, and somebody may challenge you on it, you know. Well, this ain't happening. That ain't happening. But I know, I happen to know, we have prayed enough for enough reports to come back to know. We don't know when Yahweh going to do something, but how much of a blessing it is when we get to hear that Yahweh has done this, Yahweh has done that, you know, we just believe Yah because only he can do. You know, when we look around, we don't see Jeremiah today, but that's a prayer answer. That's a prayer answer. Hallelujah. Only Yah could take a tumor that comes up from wherever it comes from, have it cut out, and then give him a promise that probably you're going to go ahead and do your NFL thing. That's Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's the, the teaching for today. Prayer is power. Hallelujah. We connect with Yahweh. It's how we connect with Yahweh. It is how we connect or uh, dispel those principalities, those evil spirits in high places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah is faithful, you know. It's, it's like, you know, he told Moshe, when Moshe was standing there on the mountain, you know, they were getting ready to do that all-night fight. <laughs> what are you standing there looking at me for? Raise up your rod. This is our rod. We got to speak. Hallelujah. You know, we got to speak. We got to do what we got to do, you know, and because he does not have to do what he told us to do. He's already given us instruction, you know, on how, and, and, and when to do. He is, he is there to fight our battles, but we got to call it out. Call it out. There are angels there to help us and messengers, but we've got to call it out. It's like the angel told Daniel, Yahweh heard your prayer the minute before it even left your mouth. But sometimes things get held up in the heavenlies or wherever. And it took a little bit. I had to call Michael in on this one. Because it was a great battle in heaven. And, and, and Yahweh knows that, you know, we don't know who or what is fighting for us. We don't know who else is out there praying, you know, who, how Yahweh is considering a situation. And we just praise Yahweh for that. We just thank him for his goodness, for his mercy. We thank him for the power that he has given us. He is all power that we have, the creator of the universe on our side. The word says, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Of Yahweh Elohim. Hallelujah. So, that's, that's it for me. 
A short one, a quick one. I'm praying for you.